to the stage, Mr. Kel Mitchell. Woo! What's up? <laughs> that was incredible, doing? wasn't it? That was amazing, bro. Look at you, man. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, some water up here. Cool. Oh, yeah. We got you covered up here. This, I have to talk to you about Bless Mode. And just for those of you guys, if you're just joining the room, uh, be sure to get up to the microphone and get your questions answered because we are here on your behalf. But I want to talk to you about Bless Mode because yes. I'm sure we've got... Where are our gamers? Where are our video gamers in the house? Ow! We got them. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Woo! Bless Mode has an interesting sort of double entendre to the name. Talk me, talk It to does. Me about that. Okay, so uh, love playing video games, super awesome. And you all know in video games, when you have a code, right? So the up, down, left, right, start, remember that back in the day? <laughs> He's like, ah! <laughs> Remember that? Super, super fun with Nintendo. And what's cool about that is that, you know, the designers of the game did that so they could go inside of the game, figure out if there's any bugs or anything wrong with the game, right? And so when consumers found out, oh, uh, now we have the code, we can get in there, now we know what the designer knows. So uh, as believers, right, believers in Christ, right, we know what the designer knows. We know that we are beautifully and wonderfully made by God. Right, and so, uh, hey man, <laughs> hey man. So now we have that spiritual code in our hearts, and uh, that's what I wanted to show uh, within that. Uh, I love anime too. Uh, you'll see a lot of that. You'll see a little bit of Scott Pilgrim in that music video too. Uh, it's a lot that's in there, uh, and I mixed it with. Daniel and the Lions Den, I mixed that in there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I mixed that in there too as well. Uh, but yeah, we just had fun with it. It's awesome. And then my book, Bless Mode, it's a 90-day devotional. And uh, I'm super excited about that. It's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. A lot of people are dealing with a lot of frustration, a lot of stress, and I wanted to let them know that they're beautifully and wonderfully made by God and to go after their day every day. So in this devotional, each day, uh, I take you through a Bible verse, and then I take you through a story of my life, and then there's a prayer, and then at the end is something called Go Get Them Blessings, where I have you apply it to your life. Uh, and that's what Bless Mode is, and it's available everywhere, in stores everywhere. Uh, it came out uh, in December, it's been doing great, and we decided to do a song with it, yeah. I think yeah. it's fantastic, and we are coming to your question, so stick tight with me there, but I do wanna ask you about this. Yeah. Um, we just had Will Wheaton come out here and talk about um, how challenging his childhood was. You, as a childhood actor, sort of started you down the path to where you ultimately are now, in Finding yeah. Christ, and, and finding a sense, uh, an island in the storm where you could be whole again as, as some of the challenges that you face. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Well, well, definitely. I mean, within this, uh, just in life, I mean, there's, there's ups and downs, you know what I mean, in life. And what I had to figure out was that in those ups and downs, uh, God was always there for me. You know what I mean? In the down times and even in the entertainment business, uh, it's some people that weren't there during the down times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but God was. And so for me, I would be doing everyone that is a fan of mine a disservice if I didn't let them know how to get out of the stress that they've been in, uh, out of the frustration that they're in in their lives, uh, and to let them know uh, the code, meaning that you know that you can get through it. In every emotional wall, there is a blessed breakthrough there's a blessed breakthrough because so many people, oh, amen, <laughs> yeah, thank you. So many people are connected to um, their past, past mistakes, things they've been going through, and they just replay it over in their mind over and again. And this brain is like a, a disc. It holds everything, right? Uh, but the thing about it is that it says, renew your mind daily, you know what I mean, in the Word of God. And so the thing about it is that you can... Uh, destroy those negative thoughts with positive thoughts. So say positive things about yourself, you know what I mean? Stop repeating bad things about yourself. I used to do that, you know what I mean, all the time. It was like, oh, if I didn't do that, or if I didn't say that, or if that didn't happen, or this job, and this, that. Hey, look, what's for you is for you, and you were all born for a purpose. Never feel like you were never born for a purpose. Everyone here is born for a purpose. You're not lost. You know what I mean? So yeah. <laughs> this is why I love, I love the Friday group so much because everyone who has been on this stage has touched on that in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, you know, even Haley Atwell talking about finding value in who you are as a person, um, yeah. regardless of what's going on in the, the world around you. Let's yeah. go ahead and get to your question. What's your name? Sure. Where are you from? Um, Margarita. I am from Alexandria. Hi, Margarita. Woo! Um, and my question is, recently there was the All That Revival. 
Yeah. And you've got to get to go back to that and help the new generation. And you also got to revisit some of your old characters. So yeah. what was it like stepping back into that space as an adult? Great question. Uh, uh, the fans, you all brought it back, <laughs> okay? Uh, you all were on Facebook when we did the uh, 90s uh, Nickelodeon hour that we were showing for everyone. And then uh, everybody on Facebook was like, bring all that back. We want it back. We want it back. And so uh, Keenan and I actually executive produced uh, that revival of uh, all that with a whole new generation of kids. And it was funny when we did it, uh, the first thing all of you all asked with the fans were like, don't ruin it! <laughs> and so, <laughs> and no pressure, right? And so uh, we tried our best not to do that. It was a lot of uh, being a producer in uh, that aspect, which was awesome. Uh, to answer your question, it was awesome to be able to produce on a show with the producers that produced me when I was younger on the show. So it was cool to like, you know, act and then go upstairs and then do notes, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. So that was, that was just a great thing for me. And then um, I remember when we brought the show back, we had all new characters because it was a new cast. But then the writers were like, hey, uh, we know you're producing, but can you like get in the suit, like the Good Burger suit? Can you do the Coach Cretan? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, let's do it, you know what I mean? I'm never, like, I'm not one of those actors that, like, hate the stuff that I did in the past. Like, I'm, I'm so uh, happy that people still enjoy it, and I'm glad I was working out so I could still <laughs> do all those physical, because all my characters are very physical. So, uh, but yeah, it was cool being Ed, you know, with a whole new cast, and it's, it's super fun, yeah. <laughs> That's a great question, Margarita. Yeah. Were you able to offer some of the kids the mentorship that um, maybe you did or did not have when you were on the set as a child actor? What was so very important to me uh, is that I, want, I cared about their mental health. Uh, because in this business, you see a lot of entertainers dealing with mental health. I've seen it, I dealt with it. And so I told them something that I wish was told to me uh, when I first you know, got on the gig, right? Uh, I told them this job is not the thing that makes you special. You were made special when you were born. When you were knitted in your mother's womb, you were made special. And this is just a stepping stone to a long journey in your life of other jobs that you are gonna have. So that way, you can enjoy it and know that this is a job of the beginning of many more, okay? So just understand that. And uh, then you might not even wanna act anymore. Your journey might be somewhere else. But just have fun while you're doing it. And that what that does is, is that it doesn't have them comparing with, each, with one another, it doesn't have them getting so caught up uh, within the character because a lot of people get caught up in the character and don't have a good sense of self and so I really wanted to make sure I said that uh, to them and they've done it you know what I mean that was back in 2019 and now seeing them grow up and seeing them understand that and we all still stay in contact uh, is it, super awesome and I had my mom uh, and my dad fly out too because it's important for parents to understand that too with kids in the business and because uh, the parents are just you know they're being brought into this out of nowhere. Their kid is like now on television, people know them. And I wanted my parents to tell their perspective to the other parents. Uh, and I feel like this is something we need <laughs> like on every set. And I was talking to Nickelodeon about that and that's something we're gonna start at Nickelodeon uh, because we need that. Yeah, we need that. That's, Definitely. especially given the stories that we've heard, I'm, I'm glad that you had the foresight to make that happen for these kids because it yeah. can be overwhelming, right? And especially in the era of social media, who the, their, their digital footprint is huge in a way, it's even exacerbated, right? The challenges yes. to, to some degree. Um, I'm getting to all of you guys, go ahead. Hi, how are you, what's your name? Uh, Michael, I'm from DC. Uh, so you talked about God earlier, and I was wondering, yeah. how exactly did you find God, and how exactly did he help you? Man, I always, I grew up in the church, right? Uh, my grandfather was a pastor, uh, but there's a difference between knowing God and having a relationship with God. And so I got to the point where it was like, dude, I was at a point in my life where I didn't want to be here anymore. You know what I mean? I was literally going to take my life because it was just a lot of things that I was dealing with as far as like frustration and mistakes and people in my life. And I, I did a prayer uh, right before that uh, where I said, if it's anything that's not of you, God, take it away from me. 
right? And when I did that, a lot of stuff started to reveal in my life of people that were doing like really negative stuff behind the scenes. Uh, a lot of things happened within that. And I started going, wow, this is like a storm. Did I, why the hell did I pray for this? What is happening? But then what I realized is that some storms are meant to clear a path, right? So when that happened in my life, God was eliminating people he was eliminating things that I was doing that was of habit that I needed to change within my life. And when that happened, my eyes really like opened up. And when I was literally at the top of, you know, I was in Canada, I remember I was shooting like my two and I was going through a whole bunch and I remember hearing something say, hey, go lock yourself in, in the room and don't come out till later. And I didn't jump off that balcony, I locked myself in the room. And that morning I woke up and I said, okay, look, I, I'm gonna trust you, Lord. I'm gonna trust you and I'm gonna do what you want me to do and I'm gonna be obedient to it and just follow it. And it didn't, it wasn't like overnight now, I was this like super righteous guy. It takes time, you know what I mean? Remember I talked about renewing your mind daily? So what I started to do was, is that I started to put God in the head of all of everything that I was doing within everything, relationships, within thought process, within things that I'm thinking about before I start my day, I started to do that. And that's literally way back when how Bless Mode started was because I wanted people to understand that to get through this life, to tap into that joy. You know what I mean? To tap into joy because it's the difference between happy and joy. A lot of people think happy and joy are the same thing. But being happy is like receiving a gift. Oh, I'm happy, hey. But joy is being happy no matter the circumstance no matter what's going on. And so I had to really tap into being joyful even when there's trouble going on and know to have that joy and bring joy and change the atmosphere when I'm around people by still having that joy and not get so caught up in uh, frustration and things of, of the world, you know? Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for that Thank question. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, question to you over here. <laughs> Hi, my name's Albert. I'm Hi, Albert. from Alexandria. Yeah. And um, I wanted to ask about, I was a big fan of your work on Nickelodeon. And I also love the movie Mystery Men. Ow! And I think it was definitely a movie that was ahead of its time now that superhero movies are like the biggest genre now. And I, yes. you know, it was an amazing cast. Um, wasn't successful at the time, but I right. wanted to hear about that experience. And was there plans to do more with that, that superhero <laughs> group, you know? Wait, was that, that was your question? He's like, he's like hold on! <laughs> okay, so I answer for both of you guys. Um, here's what's crazy, right, so Mystery Man, uh, we had big anticipation for that, because it was, it was gonna be huge. Uh, and in and Sixth Sense, you remember Sixth Sense, the movie Sixth Sense? Yeah. It, they moved their date. They were gonna come out the weekend after us. They moved their date on the same weekend. And so because of the, you gotta watch to, to the end of Sixth Sense to figure out what was happening, everybody was excited about that. And so that's what happened. But the cool thing about Mystery Man is that it ended up becoming a cult classic. And that is such a beautiful thing. I'll take that over <laughs> it doing number one at the box office. Because what happened was, was that now everybody loves Mystery Man. And like you said, uh, it started the whole team up superhero movies. Before that, we didn't see that before. The story would always just be about one superhero, but now we have these Avengers and we have these cool comedic superhero movies like with Deadpool. Uh, Dark Horse was on to something very special with Dark Horse and uh, Universal doing a movie like Mystery Man, uh, and it was definitely before its time, but now everybody's doing it. Now, uh, Ben Stiller has said that he wants to do a part two now. Uh, <laughs> so. So thank God I'm still working out. That's how I got as I said. Would would you be the invisible man now or would you stay? <laughs> I, I laughed about that. Would I be the invisible man? I guess I was thinking of some like IB, like invisible boy, but maybe call myself IB. I don't know, something cool like that. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Hi, question over here. Hi. Um oh whoops. Yeah, my name's Marshall. I'm so stoked to meet you. Nice it's so funny, you. actually, like just a couple days ago, okay. I was driving back from a shift at work and my dad was in the car yeah. and the topic of Good Burger came up and I was like, man, Ed is just the funniest part of the movie. I'm like, what's, the, what's this actor's name? And then <laughs> my dad's like, oh, it's Kel something. Look at up, mm, Kel Mitchell. I wonder yeah. what he's doing, huh? Oh, he has a successful career in Christian music. Ooh, <laughs> I'm intrigued. I gotta actually, I gotta, I got a cross necklace on. Hey, and it, I think it's brother. just, it's so inspiring Thank to you. see a fellow Jesus freak. And it's just like, that, that is so awesome. I'm so stoked. Thank you, And bro. I mean, 
I came here to Awesome Con. We actually, I got my, uh, my buddies in the back there. What's up, and buddies? We just, <laughs> yeah. And um, we, we look and it says, you know, Cal Mitchell's here. I'm like, I, wait, where do I know that name? And my, my friend guy's like, oh, he's the guy from Goodberg. I'm like, oh, it's Cal Mitchell? What's here? So and then I realized, oh, wait, I can ask him a question? Yes. And I got to ask him about his, his relationship with Christ. Where did where that come from? And that question got answered. I'm like, oh, shoot. But fortunately, I got a backup question because my go. brother just watched Good Burger. Yeah. Uh, again, like it was like a couple days ago, too. Like this is all happening so quickly. Yeah. And all caps, he said, when is Good Burger 2? So <laughs> is it? Okay. Okay. So this is what I'm telling you. You all are about to be very happy. Oh. And it's this year. Let me just say that. You oh. guys are very, very happy. Yes. I will say that. Hold because down. now I have to be quiet about it. Oh. Because cause you all are going to be very happy. I'll oh say my that. Goodness. I'll thank say you. That. I'll I will, I, I will text my brother that. right now. Wait, before you thank go, you. Yeah. what was your first name? Uh, Marshall. Marshall, you have a career in voice work at a right? minimum. Right? Really? Yeah, Absolutely. You do, You're so expressive. Like, yeah. I'm sitting here going, is he, what, what panel is he on? Am I moderating that one? So you've got the goods, my friends. Thanks. You've got the goods. You my, my friend Lars's voice is so deep. It's awesome. Pass off a question to him. Get him, get all Lars right, to come right, up. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, all right. I like it. I like it, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Question over here. Hi, I'm Tim from Alexandria. And What's up, for, man? First of all, I want to say thank you. You're, you're my... You were part of my, you were a huge part of my childhood. Dang. My 10 year old self would be in shock to be in the, in the same room as you. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, like, do you have any crazy, like, on set stories or pranks or anything that happened? Oh, dude, uh, all the time. You know, we've we, we done crazy stuff, uh, even in the 90s, but a lot of it happened uh, off set. You know what I mean? And that's how we created the Keenan and Kale show, uh, because they would watch me and Keenan offset on all that. Uh, but I remember it was one time Keenan and I, uh, we were at uh, one of the apartments or condos we were staying at, and um, uh, we wanted to wash some dishes, right? So we were like, oh yeah, let's just wash some dishes, and we're just two young kids, we don't know. And so we took, um, <laughs> we took a detergent that you, you know, that you wash up with, you know, like for inside of a laundry. So we took laundry detergent and actually put that inside of the dishwasher. <laughs> oh, yeah, we figured, hey, it should be the same thing. Why we, we're out of the stuff that for the dishwasher. That should work the same, right? <laughs> Tip young college kids, you know what I mean? So we put, we put that in there. We're watching television. And <laughs> I'll never forget it. We heard a lot of noise. And we turn around, and the whole kitchen is filled with bubbles. <laughs> like... Pass your hip bubbles, right? <laughs> it was like the funniest thing ever. We're like, yo, this is straight up a Keenan and Kel moment. This is in real life, you know what I mean? But it's, it's stuff like that, that that are memories for us that are just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. That's a great <laughs> No question. worries, man. Hi, to you over here. Hi, uh, I'm Heather Marie. I live in D.C. Uh, hey. I'm a sketch writer and performer, so nice. all that was a huge inspiration for me and continues. I still do a lot of your characters now as a 35-year-old person. Let's go. <laughs> do it. Give me one. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, Kel, who loves orange soda? Kel loves orange soda. I do, I do, I do, I do. Ooh. Hey! <laughs> Woo! I love the shirt too. <laughs> oh, thank Black you. Blockbuster. Yes. Uh, so my, I'm just really curious in the writing process, and I know there were yes. writers on your shows, but what was the collaboration like with you and the the other cast members with the with the writers? Uh, uh, in the the first one in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what was cool about that is that the writers were super cool with us uh, having a lot of input as kids, which was was deep because we're kids, and so uh, they used to bring us in and uh, say like, what type of characters do you wanna do and stuff like that. And they even used a lot of my characters from my audition process, oh. which was pretty cool. The writers put that in there. Uh, uh, coach Creighton was based on a coach that I had in, uh, in Chicago, and he was really mean. Like he would be like, who cares about Valentine's? Why you have all this love? 
happen, you know. And so I did that in there, and they put it in, you know, put it in the show. Uh, also, too, uh, Ed was in there, too. You know, I, I watched a lot of, like, Bill and Ted, Excellent Adventure, and Saved by the Bell, and all this stuff like that. So I was just like, whoa, dude, yeah, how you guys are doing? Yeah, cool audition, oh, cool. And uh, they wrote it in the show. Uh, uh, Ed was actually a pizza guy first. Uh, he was in a sketch called Dream Remote in the first season, uh, and I was a pizza guy, and I was like, here's your pizza. And they took that voice and just put it into like Good Burger and made an entire thing out of it. Uh, so the process was really cool with the actors and the writers together. Uh, it really groomed me uh, as far as sketch uh, to start writing my own stuff, and that was just so uh, awesome for me. And to learn the business within that way, because then I understood, like, hey, wait, y'all taking characters, I need to get credit for that. So let me, <laughs> but I learned, I learned along the way. So shout out to everybody that taught me uh, over there at Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We've spent a lot of time talking about sort of uh, kids, right? Starting as a child actor, now sort of mentoring and working with kids and revisiting that. But that's also something that's near and dear to your heart as a, as a personal project. Let's talk about what you have uh, coming out yes. in early September. Tell me about that. <laughs> and, we, and then we've got a little video to back that oh, up. Oh, we got too. a little video. Yeah. We got, we got a little something. So you guys are uh, special today uh, because I am an author now. Um, and so I have Bless Mode, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, that's just doing amazing, but then uh, I have another book that's coming out. Now I love movies like uh, Ghostbusters and Never Ending Story and uh, what's another one I love? Uh, My Science Project, do y'all know about that? Look it up, My Science Project. We know Bill and Ted, but check out My Science Project. Uh, but all these uh, movies, Back to the Future, um, and I wanted to create a story like that with kids, right? Um, and so this is uh, my new book uh, coming out called Prank Day. I'll explain more after the video, but uh, I'm announcing it to you all today. You get to see the book cover for the first time. Uh, and if you like LeVar Burton, you're gonna love this. <laughs> all right, let's check it out. Hi children, it's me, Kelvar Curtin, and welcome to What Are You Reading Bro? Sing along! I can read anything, go to a coffee shop, sit in a spot, they go, what are you reading bro? That's right, and today we're reading a really cool novel by author Kel Mitchell, but don't take my word for it, here's Kel. Uh, I'm so excited about this book. Uh, it's my novel. Uh, it's for kids. Super fun. Okay, so there's this kid named Chase, right? And he masterminds all these pranks on April Fool's Day. But the next day, all the pranks come true. And he has to figure out why there's a running refrigerator really running around with gym shoes. Why is there a giant spider flying around the neighborhood? Why is fruit talking on the kitchen table? And, and that's just chipping the iceberg, okay? This is such a wacky adventure. It's super fun. Uh, I can't wait for y'all to read this. Comes out September 6th, but you can pre-order it now. Let's go, go get it. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Yeah! <laughs> wait, tell me this LeVar Burton connection. They okay. brought me joy. Yes, I love LeVar Burton. Uh, I love reading Rainbow. Who loves reading Rainbow? <laughs> Hi children, it's me. Reading Rainbow curtain. is so awesome. Uh, my uh, my mom uh, is a teacher and my dad is a psychologist, so education was very <laughs> important in our house. And so I uh, love watching Reading Rainbow. Uh, but I got a funny story about LeVar Burton. Uh, he actually almost ran me over with a car. Which, <laughs> <laughs> true story, true story. I'm, I'm coming out of a barber shop, right? And I got my hair cut and I'm like coming out of the barbershop. I'm like, yeah, cool, I'm walking along. A car is like coming really, really fast at a red light. Screeches and literally I'm, I'm like on the hood like, like that. And I'm like, <sighs> and I look up and it's LeVar Burton. And he's like, hey man. And I'm like, hey. And he's like, I love you, I love you too. Oh, hey. And I'm like, I walked off. I wasn't mad about it anymore. It's LeVar Burton. I think he knew that too. Like, <laughs> he's gonna know I'm LeVar Burton. He's not gonna get upset about it. <laughs> it's so good. That is so good. But that's my first time meeting him. He almost killed me. 
So it's going to be There you go. I want to get to one more question, then we're going to do a little dance party action, which I'm actually super excited to see, but I wanted to make sure to get to your question because yeah. you have been very patient. What's your name? Um, my name is JJ. Hi, JJ. Um, my question was, what was your favorite show or movie to work on? Oh, I love them all because they all have like uh, a different memory for me. So I can't really pick just one. Uh, but uh, I have a crazy movie that I wrote called Dance Foo uh, that was pretty funny. It was about a guy that can only fight when music is playing. Because <laughs> I love kung fu movies. You're like, hold on, let me just start this track. Got it. <laughs> exactly what happens in the movie. Uh, and it's so crazy. Cedric the Entertainer uh, directed that for me. Uh, super, super fun. Uh, it was on Netflix, but I think it's on like Amazon Prime now. Uh, but check that out. It's a, it's a great movie. I wrote that film too, so it's, it's just fun. <laughs> yeah. That's a great question. Okay, walk me through this dance party business. How does this work? I'm not dancing. I just want to see. Are you going to dance? Mm -mm. Okay, you got the. You okay. got the shoes. Okay. I'll well, well, let's get everybody into this. All right, okay. so what are we going to do here? Okay, so check it out. I want you all to dance the bless mode. We're going to have a little dance contest. Who can dance up in here? Who can dance? Don't be we scared. We can go down on the floor. Should we go down okay, on the he floor? He said he could dance. Come on up. Come all on right, up. All right, here. I'm going to go if down you can, on the floor. All my dancers, put your hands up. You're going to end up on my site, too, my right. website. You can, who can dance? I'm who can coming dance? down Don't here to dance, too. I'm on my Only way. Only one person? Okay, that's cool. Don't be scared. Cal, you and I will do it together. <laughs> here we go. I'm going down on the floor. Uh oh, he's coming up. Yeah. Oh, wait, did he go up? Oh, he. He went up here. Okay, all right, all right, coming back. Came coming up. back. Hang on. I got it. I They're got coming it. up. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, you got to get right there. You got to ah, get right nice, there. Nice, nice. Okay, so we're gonna have a little dance contest. Y'all gonna root for him, all right? All right. You oh, three. Get, you're judging. We got three. There we go. I love this. Okay. JJ, do you want to come up? Do you have a song? You don't have a song? It's on iTunes. You got to get the song. It's called Bless Mode. What's up? I love your shirt. I love we, <laughs> and they should have it in the queue, ready to start when we're Let's ready to go. start. Let's go. JJ, if you want to come on up and dance, JJ, get up here, my friend. Come on, JJ. Everyone's welcome. There you go. Drop yeah. the beat on them. Drop the beat All on right, them. All right, let's start the song. Let's do it. Let's get it. I think they're here. Yeah. 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 Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. This what it means to be blessed. Oh, that, that, that's yeah. the instrumental. That is I know the way to be blessed. You guys have an instrumental. This is dancing Call with the stars. Bless more. Bless. Bless more. Bless. Bless more. Bless. Bless more. Wait, bless. I know what they do. Yeah. Hey. This what it means to be blessed. Hey. This what it means to be blessed. Play the music. Bless. I was playing a music video. Play the music. Son of devil, all mad, cause I'm done with sinning. Hey. Born again, I changed my ending. Oh. Brokenness mended, weakness strengthened. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enemies winded my attendance. They are, uh, we're playing it without the beat. We're playing it without the beat. We're playing it without the beat. I show up for God, I show up for God, and that's on the regular. <laughs> <laughs> Willing and able, Here flipping comes. them tables, they are unable. Oh, oh, it's coming to save them. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Now the beat's gonna drop. We're gonna play that with the beat. <laughs> That was just a teaser. That was a little teaser. That was a teaser. You got warmed up, guys. Y'all saw the music video earlier, so y'all gotta get down when the beat drop, okay? No one's pulling a hammy on my stage. I'm gonna point to you, and y'all gotta say who won, okay? You gotta go first, brother. Okay. What do y'all think? Let's bring them on up. You got it right here. Won. Everybody won. Everybody won. won. Dude, that was crazy. <laughs> Let's give it up for <laughs> Mr. Cal Mitchell. Thank you. Hi, this is Michael Shanks, and you're watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The fate of the universe may depend on it. And have fun and follow your fandom.